My name's Dan Hunter. I live on a reservation way up north. I love the sea. It's all around us. Our elders say there's magic here, in the mist that rolls down off the mountains, in the caves carved by the ocean. I didn't believe it until the day the whales came just for me. My village is far away from any other town, so everybody knows everybody here. Most of the men are fishermen. We've always gotten what we needed from the sea. Me and my friends have been waiting our whole lives to go out fishing. Wanna come? I can't. I couldn't go fishing because my mom, she had to work. So I had to take care of my little brother and sister. It didn't seem fair. Can you take the kids out to Grandpa's house? He's been asking for you guys lately. Good. My grandfather lives way out on the beach. His father was one of the last whale hunters. Poor picture. What a surprise. Mother told us to come. And you're ready to be fishing. Come inside. Oh, goodies. Grandpa, tell us a story, please. We'll tell you a story. A whale story. A whale story? Okay. The sea has always been good to us. We get our food from the sea. The biggest thing, though, was with the whale. The whale was our life, it was a lifestyle, the whale hunters. Just imagine if you go out in the sea, where you get eight men in a canoe, made out of one solid log, just a small little canoe compared to the big whale. Yet they were brave enough to go out there and get the whale. That's why you had to be trained. You had to build up yourself all, the, all through your life doing this. You had to be spiritually fit and physically fit the same rate. Otherwise, you'd be lopsided. You won't walk straight. There's a lot of stories about the whale because people used to relate to the whale. 
sometimes the whale used to help people. Would the whales help one of us? It's just an old story, tell me a whale can't really help one of us. You never know. Maybe it's just old stories, but there's truth in them. The whale always gives our people something. The whale always helps someone who needs them. I really didn't believe my grandfather. I mean, those are just stories old people like to tell, right? How could a stupid whale help me? Here I was, babysitting two little kids when I should have been out fishing with the guys. I felt pretty bad. Then, all of a sudden, the wind came up. It blew the clouds away. It felt weird, like something was watching me. than I did. They look real big. They really do get big. In fact, let me show you how big they get. Follow me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 30. nine, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. How about that? Yeah. That's a big whale, huh? Yep. What kind of whales did we see? Were they moving like this? Yeah. They were probably humpbacks. In fact, that's pretty much why they're called humpbacks, because of the fact that the hump is really evident out of the water when just before they do a deep dive. Where are they going? Well, this is the time of the year when they are due to be migrating, so probably they were doing that. Migration would be something that uh, a lot of animals do, but whales in particular move from one place to another for different reasons. If I'm hungry and I'm a humpback whale, I'll probably go to Alaska. If it's time for me to get serious about raising a family, I'll probably go down to Hawaii. If we were a baby waiting to be born, I think we would prefer to be born in, in warm water as opposed to the cold water. How do whales have babies? I think given that whales are mammals, just like us, and that they have live young who need oxygen, air to breathe, um, who are warm-blooded. I think they have babies pretty much the same way we do. Just like human babies, they eat milk. They may eat, in the case of the blue whale, for example, up to 50 gallons of milk every day. So that by the end of one week, it will be nearly twice the size it was when it was born. I think the interesting thing about it all is that we have observed another whale in very close attendance during the birth time. Perhaps the father, perhaps a good friend. And his purpose, or her purpose, would be to make sure that the baby gets to the surface in time to take its first breath of air, to be around in case there's any problems with the umbilical cord, and to protect the mother and the new child in, in case of any danger. It is necessary in their environment and in their social structure to be friendly with each other. So they do. They have a lot of friends and they cooperate greatly with their friends. Do whales talk to each other? I really think they do. They certainly don't have a language as you and I know it, but they have an amazing collection 
of diverse sounds, which they use very often for different purposes. Humpbacks are kind of interesting whales. They have a song that they sing every year, and they change parts of it in the following years. It's a, a very beautiful, haunting type of melody. And there's another way in which some whales, the toothed whales, the killer whale, for example, uses sound. This is called echolocation. Picture this, a whale swimming along. It's dinner time. So the whale emits this particular sound from inside its head. That sound travels down to the bottom of the ocean hits the bottom of the ocean and bounces back. Now that noise is audible to the whale within its head structure. Click. A click comes back. It knows that that is sand. Moves along in this direction. Click. Gets back a clack. Ah, that's rock on the bottom. Moves over here. Click. Gets back a cluck. That's just what he's looking for. That's his dinner. Then the wide beam that it's using to transmit the sound narrows and the whale concentrates on what it has already discovered, its prey, and then begins a series of sharp clicks in that direction. <laughs> getting back a almost like an x-ray picture of what is there. So the whale then is able to plot its own course to intercept and eat. Tooth whales, like the killer whale for example, those that reside in this particular part of the world seem to find salmon particularly appetizing. Baleen whales have a totally different way in which they get their food and consume it. If you've seen your mother cooking spaghetti and you know how the water gets drained through a sieve, that's the function of the baleen plates. They might have 300 on either side of their mouth. They take in these very small plankton, krill, with a lot of water. They want the food, but they don't really care too much for the water. So they push their giant tongue forward, pushing the water out through the sieve, just like the water in the spaghetti, and the meal itself gets trapped behind these baleen plates, and then they swallow. Humpback whales have devised a real unique strategy which requires the cooperation of all those within the group in order to get their food. They make a certain sound which frightens the fish into bonding closer together. Then the whale comes up through the middle and it has the maximum amount of fish in that one single mouthful. Those spouts are simply whales breathing. kind of an easy question to answer because it's very difficult to be out there and watch them jumping up out of the water and crashing back down on their backs 
rushing around after each other, I think very definitely they play, and I think they really enjoy that time. smart are they? I think that's a question you'll probably get a different answer from everybody you ask it. For myself, I believe they're very smart. I think when, when we think about echolocation, when we think about how they cooperate to feed with each other, when we think about the family structuring and the bonding that's within the family groups, I think it's very difficult to say that they're not smart. My grandfather says, what else help people? I think your grandfather is probably a very wise man. I think he probably also knows that there have been many, many accounts, documented accounts, of dolphins rescuing sailors who perhaps have fallen overboard from ships at sea. And now, it's probably time for us to think about what we can do for them. Why do they need our help? Ethnic populations, such as your ancestors, they really honored the whale. They took what they needed in order to survive. It was only later when factory ships which had the capability of taking 50,000 whales every year that the whale really became in great danger. Prior to the harpooning era we had probably 200,000 blue whales now we have less than 2,000. In terms of humpbacks we had 150,000 of them now we have approximately 7,000 so you see their numbers have decreased rapidly. In 1946, many countries decided that it was not good any longer to continue killing these animals. And so they signed a treaty to that effect, to say we are finished killing whales. So the danger now is not so much from being hunted and killed. It is from poisoning and polluting of their home. The whales are being subjected to poisons in the form of chemicals, oil spills, many things which are very harmful to their health and which could wipe out entire populations. The word extinct comes to mind because it's really definite. Extinct means gone forever, no more. So if we lose some types of whales, we don't ever get them back. How can we help the whales? I think seriously, the best way that you can help the whales is be a friend to them, just like them. I feel very good about talking about whales with you, with people like you, because I think my enthusiasm and deep affection for them rubs off, as will yours when you start to tell other people about them. Then more people start caring about what happens to them. More people become aware of what is happening to their environment, of the poisons and the things that we spoke of being just randomly pushed there because we don't live there. Somebody else lives there. They can take care of it. The best thing that could happen would be a greater sense of all belonging together on this one planet of sharing things together, of learning things from each other. The whale has much that it can teach us. Because I don't see any whites. 
basically what scientists do. They try to observe, just watch. By doing that, suddenly you see, ah, ah, that's how it's done. So you learn the magic and you pass it on and other people get to know it. And we get to be closer to everything that's going on in the world. You get to go to sea and do all that stuff? Sure do. Fact is, if I'm to get back out there and catch up with those whales you saw today, I best be leaving right now. Come on, maybe you can show me where it was you saw them. You did the right thing reporting those whales you saw today. Could you show me on the chart exactly where you saw them? Well, I saw them right around here. Go chop for here and stay away from these rocks. Looks like you've been studying your navigation. I sure do appreciate your good advice, Dan. I wish you well. Oh, uh, mister? Yeah. How do I get to be a whale scientist? Well, Dan, you don't know it yet, but it seems to me you're already on the way to becoming one. You've already expressed your interest for whales. That seems to be something that you really care about. I do. If that's what you really want to be, then have no doubt that's what you really will be. And between you and me, I think you'll make a really good one. This was given to me. Seems only right that I should pass it on. I can't think of a nicer guy to pass it on to. Thanks. Take care of yourself. So that's how I decided to go to sea and study whales when I grow up. Mom's all happy that I like school again. So is my teacher and grandfather. When I told him how seeing those whales that day made me want to learn everything about them. Well, he just smiled.